Welcome to the car guys. This week we're in the amazing Carrera T. So many of you watched our video of the collection of this car that we just had to revisit it, tell you exactly what it's like to drive, what it's like to own, all the features of the car, and also what it's like on the limit. So we're gonna have a little walk around this 911T. This is a beautiful black on black on black car, which really sets it off. Obviously, gray wheels, gray wing mirrors. I'm still not sure why. Optional 911T stickers on the side here. A lot of these cars don't have them added on there, but I think it adds just an interesting element. Uh, as you can see, no spoiler on this car at all. So it's nice and sleek. Nice little uh, gray picked out across there as well. The twin exhaust at the back. When they first came out with that, with the GT3 997, that for me scored a massive amount of points because it's going back to the original kind of fast 911s they all had twin pipes very nice look at the whole back of it i just love how sleek it is without that wing it's just a lovely slippery shape look at it really nice simple design that. this is the big reveal oh wow <laughs> This is the T, this is supposedly the right. uh, more driver focused, right. lightweight, right. <laughs> lightweight version. Okay, so can we, let's just explore the lightweight thing first. Why not? Because a lot of you on social media and have contacted the channel talking about this lightweight philosophy, so let's discuss it in depth. We know that the original T's yep. were stripped out, no fuss, no nonsense base models pretty much basic things no door handles just fabric pulls and a lot cheaper and substantially cheaper yes because they had didn't have any of the basic equipment the first thing to say really is that the t is based on the on the basic carrera which so is, which is good right because that's the that's the ethos it's the basic model it's sort of yeah. good the downside is you don't get the 420 horsepower of the s uh, as the base point so it right. would have been nicer if they started with the s and then took out a load of weight but what they've done is they've started with the base carrera and they've taken out a barely imperceptible five kilograms five kilograms, five kilograms. i mean i'm not being crude or anything but i bigger than that <laughs> you could get one of my arms for five kilograms, five and, kilograms and basically all of jason five kilograms is not a lot is it no let's be honest Porsche and we're looking at you right now that is not good enough okay I think we've well, got to start with at least a hundred kilograms well, off to start be. banding around Light. lightweight in your marketing blurb I was as big a sucker for this as anyone when, when when I was in the showroom oh it's lightweight get the lightweight get version the lightweight, version. lightweight purist driver's car it, it is a it is a fantastic driver's car. Right. We will get there in a minute, we will. eventually. But lightweight, you cannot claim. I'm afraid. I mean, if you spec a Carrera with the options that come standard on this, then obviously that that is a bigger weight difference. That that is a much bigger weight difference and a bigger cost difference. Probably like thirty kilograms yeah, or something. Right. Okay. It's, it's yeah. disappointing, disappointingly heavy. Would, would be what you say but that that doesn't take it away from the fact that this is obviously still a fantastic driver's car what are you thinking i'm thinking porsche have got a load of 911 991.2 body shells sitting out there and they need to get shot of them how dare you how very dare you when the next model comes out are you trying no. to say that porsche is cynically badging 911s near the end of its run with badges so that suckers like us buy that lap them up yes, yes. is that what you're trying to That's say exactly what i'm trying to say spurious and, and barely a... perceptible reasons to buy them so basic price this costs eighty-five thousand pounds eighty-five thousand of your earth pounds yeah compared to seventy-seven thousand for the basic carrera and 87,000 oh, uh, uh, for the S. The base Carrera on which this is based. Yes. Which is roughly the same weight. Yes. Is 8,000 pounds cheaper. Yes. Okay. However, 
if you wanted to have all the toys that, that comes in this car as standard on the basic Carrera, it would cost a lot more. Would it cost more than 8,000? Yes. Yeah. So basically what we're saying, this is a bargain? No, no, we're not saying that. Oh. We're, we're saying this is a, an interesting model in the range <laughs> that's got some good features and is a nice tight so driving it. experience, but it is it, not in any shape or form, form a bargain. bargain. No. It could have been a little bit more special, the T, than it is, and it should have been. So therefore, I'm slightly worried it's a bit more of a cynical marketing move than a, than a true great. <gasps> there, there, there'll be less of them, and it's fun enough for it to sit, I think, and hold its head up high in the range. It's got a limited slip differential. Has it? It's got rear steering. It's got the PASM system, so the sports driving modes. It's got heated seats for some reason. Yeah, that's odd, isn't it? Heated. Why is it? It's got cruise control, for God's sake. Start, stop, which Start, you have to stop. keep turning off every time you drive. Yep. Nice. It's got the chrono pack. Rear seat wise, you're going to be able to get small children yeah, in there. So basic you'll, children. you'll be able to get both your boys in there yeah. and they would absolutely love it, wouldn't they? They would. Although the front has got quite a smallish boot, quite a deep, small boot, but you've got all that for luggage as well. Yeah, you've got all that so space. Tons. And so packaging wise, they do such an amazing job. Mm. There's more space in here for two adults and two kids than there is in a Mini. What we need to do, I think, is maybe just give it a little bit of what we like to call the beans. The beans? In the Sport Plus mode, just so we can uh, benchmark, really, what sort of speed you're gonna get out of this twin turbo motor. And here we go again. good enough isn't it the brakes are not bad either I mean, it's not the most scintillating noise in the world no at low speed it's actually got lots of interesting rumbles and noises but i think on, when you're on it, it it certainly doesn't match the normally aspirated flat six it's howl. difficult it's difficult isn't it with turbocharging to try and make a noise that's actually decent yeah or or raucous in any way shape or form because the turbos just kill it it's very responsive it's got plenty of horsepower for this kind of thing um, it's not too big, so the classic old British B-Row doesn't phase it. You're not always flinching every time something's coming the other way if you're pushing on. I try not to lift off to the middle of a corner, no, that would be really helpful. <laughs> they fix that. They have fixed that. They fix that. Still a little bit wobbly. But yeah, brilliant car. What do you think? Loving it, loving it, loving it? I am. Loving it like that? Despite the fact that it is in no way lightweight and despite no. the fact that it is i mean quite you know the power is sufficient but it's I, I would prefer a bit more power overall a bit more torque i think would be nice so what i love most about it is it's like a pair of comfy slippers oh really yeah you just you just jump in it and everything is perfectly positioned everything is comfortable you just get in turn it on drive drive as fast as you want slow as you want but it's just it's just immediately comfortable like your favorite old isn't it yeah as a, as a sports car or an everyday, you could daily this without any problems whatsoever. Yeah. No fear that it would break down, it's comfortable, it's easy to drive, easily daily this. And the central touch screen is intuitive, it works exactly really well. All these controls down here, nice simple action, they do exactly what they say. Very, very intuitive. Very Germanic, very obvious, very logical. The only issue you've got if you've got a manual car of course and you've got and you're in one of these particular gears is that it does hide some, some of the, the controls yeah. which is a bit of an issue so you've got to look over them in order to see them. Do you want to swap over at some point? Yes. Right time for you to drive the 911T. Enough pace. I do not think. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it is not that fast a car. We no, should we should point that out. Plenty of pace. Yeah, it's enough to keep up with modern traffic. It's enough to sort of give it the, you know, live up to the name 911. Oh, yeah. But you can you can feel how how less power it's got than perhaps some of its uh, more fruity cousins. Should yeah, we I mean, say? You're definitely not destroying Ferraris in this. No. But. Or even Jaguars. Or even Jaguars. 
but uh, it's quick enough. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, on a twisty road, once, you know, rather than the straight-out drag race, once you get onto something twisty, it, it will destroy most things. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? Because, obviously, I'm turning around in the uh, in the old Carrera, in the old uh, Targa. You can feel the lineage, if you like. That core DNA. Yeah, thing. you can feel that it's, mm. that it's a 911, which is odd how they've managed to dial that in as a dynamic thing. It's nice to be driving a manual modern Porsche as well. It is. I think that's what that's what's bringing me back to the 911R as a prospect, Ooh. and a manual, obviously 991.2 GT3. I'm really getting back into that because, of course, those ones they're both six-speed manuals, which I right. think is a better box. The seven on this, I know I mentioned it on the collection video, but the seven on here it feels like it's just too many gears Trying and they're too to close hard. together yeah yeah so it's very very easy to go f into third rather than fifth it requires a bit more thought than i think yeah. it should do and i think the yeah. six speed is probably the best because if you're pushing on you don't really want to be thinking am i going into fifth or am i going into seventh well there's no real chance of accidentally slipping into seventh because you have to shove it right to the right and then crank it up there to get it in there it's yeah, like it could manly yeah, exactly it's like it's like breaking someone's arm <laughs> that's that that's how you do it it's like shaking hands with frankenstein would you like to know about the brakes i'd love to know about the brakes 330 millimeter four pot caliper four pot brakes when you put your foot on them they don't feel like super beefy they actually do feel a bit delicate to me which i think means you get a lot more feel out of the pedal yeah you can modulate the pedal better because mm. you get a little bit of they're not over servoed yeah wingless so it's got that really smooth profile i was looking yeah. at on, uh, on the windows reflections as we were going by and i mean it does it's a lovely so profile nice. i like the steering is quite um direct as well that's quite nice not very many turns lock to lock i wouldn't have thought it's a nice yeah. sized steering wheel yeah, it's, it's really good. manageable what what i found Having recently sat in a 918 Spider, it's the same steering wheel. Is it? It is. In particular, that jog dial to select the different driving modes, Right. that's 918 Spider. Is it? That's where it was tested, yeah. So one of the standard options that you get on this, which you can't even specify on a Carrera, is the Porsche's PASM system. Right. And what you get there is you, you obviously get some the ability to change the dynamics of the car, and it gives you that those driving modes. But what you can do is use that dial on the steering wheel to select Sport and then Sport Plus. Right. And then you've also got the individual mode that you can create. So you've got... Oh, okay. So you can tailor it. You can tailor it, yeah. Oh, but okay, the, cool. there's not that many options. So you're in the standard mode at the moment. Which is you. Yeah. Which is like uninteresting, presumably. Oh. You for uninteresting, unsporty, unchallenging. So change it up to Sport. Let's see what happens. What Sport means is... Noisy exhaust. Noisy exhaust. And presumably something else has changed a little bit, but not that we can tell or configure. Does it feel a bit more jiggly? Yeah, I think it's slightly harsher. Okay. So then if you go to Sport Plus, the exhausts have become even more, even louder, and the gear changes are quicker. So that oh, is noticeably... And it, and it does the downshift on its own. Ah. The rev. Ah, downshift. yeah, I'm glad you... Yes, exactly. That One of the big differences of Sport Plus is it does the blips on the down changes and the up changes itself. That is some clever stuff. It's clever, it's clever, definitely clever. Whether people who can drive and like to do that themselves are going to get annoyed by that, I don't know. I quite like it. Yeah. So the Carrera T will do 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds right. versus 4.6 for the standard Carrera. So there's only a tenth in it. Which you're never going to notice. The S does it in 4.3. Which again, you're probably never going to notice. Pretty, pretty marginal. So there's obviously quite a big difference of about two or three tenths versus P PDK versus manual. Right. So, so by choosing the manual, we are purposely being slower. Yes. But but we sacrifice that for the more in driver involvement. More involvement, right, exactly. Yeah. Top speeds, pretty much the same for the Carrera and the Carrera T, so right. 182 versus 183, right. and then the S is 191, so significant. Like, that's quite a step on then. But so how much more horsepower has an S got over, the, over these two, over the S and the T? 50. 50 horsepower? Yeah. Okay. See, I would have thought... 10 grand, 10 grand more. 10 grand more for 50 horsepower. For 50 horsepower. horsepower. You can specify a T with uh, rear wheel steering. 
Oh, okay, so that's an option, is it? It's an option for this. So giving it rear wheel steer is what makes it feel more nimble, right? Because that's what that's what made the um, the 991 GT3 feel super nimble. So I guess it's something interesting that this car's got, along yeah. with the old fabric door pulls, which I'm a big sucker for. When you run low on petrol, it automatically just says, you're running low on fuel, here are our selection of fuel stops nearby. Would you, would you like to navigate to one of these? A lot of cars will tell you that the fuel is low and a lot of them will, on a sat nav, allow you to find fuel stations, yes. but rarely do they tie it up automatically so that you don't have to worry. So you don't have to think about it. Yeah, and that is an, a perfect example of, of Porsche, how it's all focused to the driver. German engineering. Yeah, and just very clever thinking. In the same way that if they could tell, oh, you're feeling a bit hungry, here's some fast food restaurants nearby. Here's a, here's a drive through it's only a small step from there where you have to wear a little Porsche catheter and it just it'll just sense what you need. You just to get injected with a with a little chip. Yeah, it says you you're you're about to, you know, you want to go for a dump. Here's a service station. <laughs> Porsche 911 GT3 or a GT3 RS Why or a getting, GT2 RS. Why aren't you getting any of those GT cars? All the allocations appear to have gone despite there being uh, open production runs on a lot of those cars. It just seems like there's way too much demand for them and we've got far too small an imprint with uh, Porsche to be able to get them, which is a real shame and it's properly f***ed me right off. <laughs> I wanted to be the first owner on the logbook of at least one of those cars. I didn't want all of them necessarily, although if you're interested, you, you yeah, can you get me all of them. Yeah, yeah. I believe that this current generation, the 991.2 GT cars, are going to be the last proper, full-on, full-fat, full-meaty goodness, <laughs> normally aspirated driver's cars that Porsche is going to make. I think after this, it's all going to be electric, it's all going to be hybrid, it's all going to be... going to be hybrid? Yeah, I think really? it is, yeah. Well, definitely electric, that, definitely electric, if not full electric, but definitely also hybrid. I wanted to be the, the... I wanted to have one of these cars, I wanted to be the first and only owner on it, one owner car, and then I wanted to keep them forever. The reason why I'm depressed now is that... Sulking. It is a sulk, it's a big sulk. Okay, I can buy one of those cars on the aftermarket, but forever, that car will have the name of the flipper, the guy who flipped the car to make some profit will be the first owner of that car forever and that really pisses me off. And you'll see that log work and you'll get a log book out and you'll just go, Argh. But what it's teaching us is that is that Porsche's allocation process for these cars isn't really working it's still broken. because the people that really want these cars, they want to keep them, they want to drive them, they're not getting the cars. Some of them are obviously, but a lot of them appear to be flipping them. Because we were looking forward to obviously we doing were. doing a lot of miles in them, doing a load of trips, spending a lot of time really testing these cars. Probably. And you know, we still are obviously, because it means we're gonna have to now go and buy one of these cars used. Used. But it's just not used. quite as special. Yes, he's quite wide, isn't he? He's quite wide. Give him a fight berth. He sinks. So what you don't want to have coming in the opposite direction, bloody hell. Thanks for watching the video guys. Hope you enjoyed this look at the 911 Carrera T. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments because we read them all, and that notification bell for when we got another video uploaded. There'll be another video soon. Cheers.